to the Chrissy B Show. Now, everyone has feelings of anxiety at some point in their life. For example, you may feel worried or anxious about sitting an exam or having a medical test or job interview. Feeling anxious is something perfectly normal, but people with generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, find it hard to control their worries. Their feelings of anxiety are more constant and often affect their daily life. So whether you get anxious from time to time, or this is something that you live with on a daily basis, this show is going to be great tonight for you because I'll be delving into this subject with my expert guest tonight, psychologist, Dr. Michael St. Clair. And it's also Wednesday, as you know, so we'll also be having Chris Brown on who'll be sharing his self-development tips. And also, if you want to participate in the show, maybe anxiety is something that you've been through in the past or maybe you're going through and you want to let us know how you deal with it, you can give us a call on 020-7686-6300 or you can give us, um, you can send an email as well, chris at chrissybshow.tv. And as you know, it's a live show, it's your show, so you can participate as well. But let's introduce our first guest and that's Dr. Michael. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well thank you so good to see you here thank you for having me so Great this to topic here. hopefully is going to help a lot of our viewers and actually most people go for anxiety at some point in their life don't they it's not something uncommon absolutely yes i think you know for the majority of us we're experiencing some level of anxiety these days when we think yeah. about all that's going on in terms of the, the economy and and, yeah. and losing our jobs and all this kind of stuff or the threat of that so anxiety mm -hmm. is a very normal um experience for most of us today Okay, can you give us like the doctor's definition of anxiety? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, anxiety is, um, as we say, a very natural and often a very helpful um, psychological response to mm. our perceived dangers and threats in life. Um, it provides us with a, a vital boost of psychological, emotional and physical energy just when we need it most, when we need to uh, protect ourselves against perceived dangers that may occur mm -hmm. in our day-to-day -day life. So our animal instinct then? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you may have heard of a, a term called flight or fight response, which mm -hmm. is um, exactly what we're talking about here. We can trace this back to our, our cave-dwelling ancestors, back to the caveman times. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can think of a caveman, you know, or the cavemen, they weren't a very confident bunch at all. They, you know, were just here on earth and, and, and needed to survive and, and yeah. find their way through a very frightening and very new um, environment. So they were on high alert all the time, always mm -hmm. second-guessing the the worst possibility that could occur, pump full of adrenaline in order to fight or flight um, any dangers that may occur. Yeah. We've inherited this survival response, this fight or flight response. Um, and in, in a way, it's actually quite helpful for us if we find ourselves in a, well, a very- It doesn't feel very nice, does it? <laughs> Well, it, well, it might not. It might not. But you can see how it, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, it could be quite productive if we find ourselves mm. in a dangerous situation. If we ourselves need to uh, think on our feet and, yeah. and either escape something by running away or fighting something. So we're being chased down the street by a, by a maniac or something like that. Mm. I mean, we're yeah, going to really yeah. need to help ourselves. Um, but anxiety can be a problem when it becomes too intense, too right. frequent, um, you know, goes on for too long. Or mm -hmm. certainly starts to impede in our in our everyday life. So mm -hmm. it may impact on our functioning at work or at home in our relationships. Um, people who are anxious may, you know, use alcohol or drugs to quell those feelings of um, anxiety to try and get rid of them. And yeah. of course, that can lead to physical and and more psychological problems. Okay, who would you say would be more prone to anxiety? Is there sort of a certain type of person or something that they've been through? or male or female, what, what do you think? Well, it's it's hard to distinguish between gender like that. Um, mm -hmm. And what we are seeing is that a lot more men are coming forward to clinics, for instance, like where I work, yeah. to um, get gain help with some of their anxiety disorders. I think that we're talking about it a lot more today and programs like this are great to, yeah. to promote um, self-help in that respect. So men are coming forward more and we are seeing more men presenting with certain anxiety conditions um, say around their body image, for instance, which we never really? didn't see that many before yeah. indeed. <clears throat> Um, but I think, you know, generally we're, we're all experience some level of anxiety. You said there's a lot of pressure for us to perform these days at, at certain levels. We've got our, our Blackberries and our iPhones and there's a constant demand to always, you know, be there, be present to respond to emails, our social networking sites and so forth. Yeah. So there's a constant sort of anxiety all the time to, to, to respond to things, to, to the demands that are placed on us. Yeah. Um, but underneath anxiety is something called confidence, I think, and that's something that we really need to start to think about. And the symptoms of anxiety, the, the things that we experience, that yeah, maybe we'll us, yeah. come to talk about, <laughs> um, you know, are the things that people realise that they have a, a problem with that, if that's like, if it becomes too excessive, but that's mm -hmm. not the real problem. The real problem is the underlying level of underconfidence that people may experience. Right. As we just said, it goes back to our caveman days who are an underconfident bunch. They used anxiety as a protective mechanism when they felt mm -hmm. underconfident, and we do the same today. 
Okay, but what are some of the symptoms then? So how do I know, for example, if I'm just feeling nervous about something or mm. if it's something that I really need to, to get help for? Because you actually run a practice, of, you were telling me earlier, how, what's your practice like? You have 15, would you say 15 people? Uh, yeah, there's about 15 psychologists in there, right. yes. Which and you manage and everything. I manage yeah. them, yes. And okay. um, we, we run a practice in three sites in London and mm -hmm. we're, you know, inundated with clients at the moment. Really? Absolutely, Gosh. with a lot of people suffering with a whole array of anxiety mm -hmm. disorders. So um, people do come to us with low levels of anxiety and they may just need a bit of guidance along the way. But yeah. the symptoms can um, become more severe than that um, and yeah. come into you know, certain presentations that we've all heard of, things like obsessive compulsive disorder, generalised anxiety disorder, PTSD for instance. Mm -hmm. But the general symptoms of anxiety fall into four main realms, if you like, um, and these are four parts of our experience. So we have um, an emotional experience of anxiety, which mm -hmm. is where we feel the uneasiness, the, the dreads, the nervousness in our yeah. emotions. We have a, a very distinct or, or particular thinking style that goes with anxiety, which mm -hmm. you may notice when you're being anxious. Um, and that's something called worry. We all know that term, it's, yeah. it's worry, uh, which is characterized by kind of forward projections of catastrophe, always asking questions and um, mm -hmm. the what ifs, what if this happens, what if that happens. Quite pessimistic kind of Absolutely, of thinking, thinking the yeah. worst about what might happen in the future. So it may not of, ever happen. Right? It may not ever happen, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, so that goes on in our mind. There's lots of rigid thinking as well, so absolute terms of um, it shouldn't be this way and it must be that way and I need this, for instance. So, mm -hmm. you know, for, for example, the, the old um, classic of, of a partner maybe saying about their partner, you know, if he or she loved me, really loved me, then, you know, they'd know exactly how I'm thinking. They, they mm -hmm. you know, that it should be that way. Can you see? And obviously when it isn't that way, then they start to feel anxious. Yeah. So lots of rigidity in the way we think when we're anxious. There's also the, the, the bodily response of anxiety, which is often the one that people um, come to notice first of all and realise there might be something going on for them and certainly um, often become anxious about that anxious bodily response. So the, the it's a bit of a cycle, isn't it? Indeed, like, yeah. it is a vicious cycle. Gosh. So we're talking about things like um, an increased um, breathing rate, for instance, a difficulty catching our breath, our, mm. our heart can beat fast, a rapid heartbeat, uh, heart palpitations particularly. Um, we can feel dizzy and um, lightheaded at times. We may feel nauseous or, or cramp in our stomach. Um, and often some of the... Um, uh, uh, the sort of symptoms of, of IBS, particularly irritable mm -hmm. bowel syndrome, we don't often associate with anxiety, are anxiety related. Oh, this is a, okay. a, a problem in, in the stomach where um, we may have. Well, I can some... relate to the, the heart palpitations because I, I didn't actually tell you this, but I used to get panic attacks quite a lot. Mm. Um, about 15 years ago, I had it for like about seven years. It came like with depression, panic attacks. And I just remember like the way you're describing, um, just feeling very anxious yeah. out, of no, out of nowhere it would just come on like just I wasn't expecting it. it would just start to happen and I would my heart would be very fast I'd get very hot and I would have to make sure I got indoors as soon as possible because I knew then I'd start to shake and I'd even scream because I was so terrified right. what, what I went through and it was such an awful thing to go through and I know people don't have it to that extent but there are a lot of people that actually do experience these kind of attacks is what it is related, isn't it, to, to anxiety at the end of the day? Uh, absolutely, yeah. yes. And, and one of the very um, common components of it is what you described there, which is sort of going back home when you feel that way. Can you see? So we want to uh, escape to indoors. Yeah. So that's the behavioural component of anxiety and, and yeah. one of the symptoms that we can experience in itself. So we do lots of avoidance of, of situations or, or objects. That's where phobias come in, particularly, yeah. where we, yeah. we, 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 we avoid those situations. Um, it may involve us doing lots of sort the checking behavior as well so if we're um, anxious about our physical health for instance we may check our body a lot to see what sort of symptoms mm. we've got um, we're reassurance seeking asking people you know for reassurance about certain things when we're, we're anxious as well that may also look like us going onto the internet or Google to you know search up symptoms that we may or may not have so we call I'm it because there's a friend of mine that's yeah, <laughs> that a lot she's always thinking that there's something wrong and she's, she'll go on the internet and start searching for things I try